Hello, my friends, and good morning. I'm so excited that you have decided to join us on another adventure. We're up here in the George Washington National Forest this weekend, and we're going to be doing some exploring. I say we, I'm with my friend Dennis. Um, Dennis is on his Subaru Forester, and I'm on the Outback this weekend. So uh, yeah, we've got some routes planned. Um, this is the James River, just outside of uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. It's a pretty little spot. And um, so yeah, we've got a fun-filled weekend planned. Uh, some trail riding, I brought my Dutch oven, so we're gonna cook up a meal tonight. Hopefully we'll find a nice spot right on the Peddler or the Piney River up there, maybe even the South Fork. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm glad you guys joined along. Welcome, welcome back subscribers. Uh, I'd like to say hi to any new visitors. Hope you enjoy this content. Have a good one. Ever just have one of those perfect days on the trail oh man this is great we haven't passed a soul we've been on uh, Panther Falls Road which is Forest Road 311 for a bit um, we turned off the parkway onto I think what's called Massey Mill Road forget the Forest Road number on that but just absolutely fantastic day what a beautiful drive Beautiful day to be on the trail, eh? Oh, it makes me smile. Yes, it does. Subaru day. And I would guess it might be Maybe it's up here where there's this sudden elevation thing. Yeah. Pretty. What is that? Sushi on the trail. Why not? Now, what are these falls called? I think it's Dayton Creek, S-T-A-T-O-N. Dayton Creek? Dayton. Okay. It felt like station, but no eye. Beautiful. Let me here and check them out. That's a check. Oh, all right.
Well, my friends, once again, we have found what I consider an epic camping spot. We're on FSR 39, uh, west of, no, east of Buena Vista, and uh, check out our spot. We're, um, we're kind of on the converge of uh, two creeks running together right here. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful sounding evening. I got the Subaru Park right beside the creek right there. Dennis is Forrester in the background. He's getting camp set up. So, um, yeah, man. Love it. So a little intro to what we're having for dinner tonight. We're at this beautiful spot right here. Do we even know what the name of this creek is, Dennis? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think it's the Piney or the Peddler or anything. I think it's just a small creek running into the Lynchburg Reservoir. But tonight, we're having beef stroganoff. And so the inspiration behind this dish, it's a Hungarian dish. And the Buckner family is adding a Hungarian member to our family this weekend. So I thought in honor of this new member of our family, we're making a Hungarian dish. So it is beef stroganoff. So the ingredients here, we've got our onion, we've got our garlic, we've got our mushrooms, beef broth, a little oil for the Dutch oven, which you can see over there, some parsley, some flour, some egg noodles, and in the cooler, some beef. And I'll cut that up here in just a minute. But yeah, so we're gonna get started on uh, this. Uh, this onion came for the farmer's market last weekend. And so we'll get started chopping it up. What do you think? You uh, in the mood for some beef stroganoff on a summer day? Sounds good. <laughs> Typically something like that, you know, you'd cook uh, in the fall or winter, but hey, we just wanted to try something different in the, uh, in the old Dutch oven. So. What's that knife you're using? So this this knife right here, I've I use this is a C C J R B Craig, and it's got this nice cleaver sheep foot uh, design, which makes cutting. It's got a flat grind, so it's really nice for cutting up vegetables and meats and stuff like that. So that's what we're working with tonight. Cut cutting on the uh, old uh, black walnut. Forest Adventures with Scott. Um, cutting board, black walnut, hard to beat, very beautiful. So yeah, we're just gonna do some onions, we're gonna cut up some garlic. Get a panoramic of this site there, Dennis. Show the people. Yeah, but we got some top sirloin. 
and cut across the grain and get some, uh, some nice slivers of beef. We will season that with just salt and pepper and flour. And so the flour is going to act as a thickening agent. Um, it so, does smell uh, good. Let's season up the beef. Let's season up the onion and garlic too. A little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. And then we're going to put a little bit of flour on the beef. Kind of act as a little thickening agent. Toss that a little bit. Get it all covered up on the other oh, there. Chop up a little bit of parsley for garnish on top when it's ready. So, yeah, sign off for now and uh, come back to you when we uh, get that Dutch oven going. Yeah, I think so too. Or just making the campsite so big that, you know, 30 people come down here and. Yeah. Well, I think there's the probably. So Scott's adding the sour cream. What's this tempering thing, Scott? So, from what I understand and the research I've done, you have to temper your sour cream before you put it into your hot Dutch oven. And what happens is, is you bring that sour cream up to room temperature, basically, and it doesn't curdle. At least, in theory, that's what's supposed to happen. Makes good sense. Let's swap some over in here. Oh man, looks good. Yep. Yep, looks like it turned out pretty good. That yeah, looks good for starters. Yep, tell me when to stop. That's good. Okay. Right. That's what I'm saying. That looks All good. Right. Thank yeah, you, sir. There's a little parsley over there. Awesome. I mean, just kind of get turned on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Oh, same with me. It's like the last thing. Hey, good morning. Can you guys hear that? That's uh, just the sound of peace. Something to be said about sleeping by a mountain stream. Just how relaxed you can get. And uh, anyway, I had a wonderful, wonderful day and night last night. And um, when I crawled in here, I got to thinking about how blessed I was. And I also got to thinking about how I've really started to embrace uh, living in the moment. It's, uh, it's taken a long time to really grasp that. And like I'm just doing it right now, like I'm just laying by this creek up in the mountains on a forest road, nobody else around except my friend Dennis over there. He's still asleep. I think it's about 6.30 if I had to guess. But we had, we had a wonderful meal last night, good conversation around the fire. And, uh, but yeah, embracing this moment is, uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just where I am. I spent so much time um, thinking about the past and the sadnesses and joys of it and about the future and plans and things you hope to achieve or whatever or you hope to see your kid achieve. And we rarely stop and just like soak in the moment. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay here for a few minutes and listen to this brook and uh, we'll get up and make some coffee and seize the day.